supreme lord eternal truth let us obey thee alone and live according to truth paramoch prabhu satyam nitya tvameva kevalam anubartha mahe satyam anujivam kevalam om shanti hi shanti hi shanti namaste good evening bande matram welcome all of you the spiritual discussion up to this evening will be on first darshan of lord sri aurobindo the very important topic we are going to take today for spiritual discussion in brief of course it is on first darshan of lord sri aurobindo we have seen initially we have also prepared a, a few talks on the first darshan on mother of course today for this first time it is of, of course the part 1 so we are going to discuss on first darshan of lord sri aurobindo many people who are uh, here still some people are there who have heard their darshan on uh, of lord of sri aurobindo of course nobody will be there who have dars- heard the darshan of sri aurobindo none will be left out but thing is that there some people who are there they were great people of course uh, many people he was involved in this um, um, nationalist movement this uh, terrorism and all this jail experience so many ways sir abindu was involved with and uh, related with this with uh, even during the job period in baroda and all and his study of course in um, london cambridge manchester etc so many people who are confined uh, known to sir abindu but we will take some people uh, when we are speaking of the first darshan uh, so we are taking uh, um, considering the people who are uh, involved in that spiritual track those people who are pursuing this uh, integral uh, yoga this method to people who are pursuing and those who you are uh, many people who had come for darshan during his uh, intense uh, sadhana period of course in pondicherry we are taking care of these people specifically we will their experiences how it is quoted quoted and how it is described uh, and their experience of course in uh, like uh, fast darshan of lord sri aurobindo initial the very fast darshan uh, fast um, um, instance we will take um, from the darshan uh, experience of dilip kumar rai it was uh, of course january 1924 the matter was uh, discussed discussed here in mother india it was about dilip kumar rai the first um, species the first introduction we are taking um, from dilip rai dilip kumar rai it was about 8 in the morning very interesting um, morning darshan of course fast darshan it, it was a morning darshan it was about 8 in the morning sri aurobindo lived then in the house which stands at the main entrance to the ashram there sri aurobindo was staying he was seated in a chair in the front veranda in a chair he was seated in the front veranda i made him my pranam initially when we people we people go and offer our pranam um, to this great saints avatars and all i don't know in which vision they had um, glimpsed sri aurobindo initially it will be spoken here right now and they had before the darshan they had something else that we are going to seek the darshan of a great yogi and all so pranam that is the common um, sista chair we say that is the common format and took another chair in front it was there in the baranda and took another friend and oblong table stood between us oblong table it was there between us two chairs before sri aurobindo he was seated a radiant personality he quotes a radiant personality sang the very about very air about him a radiant personality sang the very air about him a deep aura of peace encircled him peaceful very peace a deep aura of peace encircled him an ineffable um, yet concrete peace that drew you almost at once into his magic orbit only peace and peace was be silence that was that was the orbit in surrounding but it was the eyes that fascinated me most the most attractive was his eyes shining like beacons his torso was bare except for a scarf thrown on thrown across the greatest living yogi of india his comment the greatest living yogi of india my heart beat fast hither do hither to 
I had been but a few sadhus and sannyasis, but uh, a real yogi. Initially, he has made some sadhus and sannyasis, but a real yogi who lived thus for years in seclusion and yet took some interest in my doings. He is no other than Sri Aurobindo itself, as quoted by Dilip Rai. Second, uh, we will go for the discussion, we will take the example of, um, of course, Amrita. When uh, Chetiyar and I approved Sri Aurobindo's house, Chetiyar street, he was staying in the, that room, he was staying in his house, uh, we found the door bolted. We both knocked at him it with some uh, hesitation. There were, they knocked and it was closed, up, bolted of course. All on a sudden the door opened and uh, was left ajar. Sri Aurobindo had come quietly and turned back immediately as the door opened. It looked as if he did not want to let us have a glimpse of his face. Just imagine, Sri Aurobindo immediately opened and turned around. That they are feeling, Sri Aurobindo as if did not want to let us have a glimpse of his face. In that fading twilight, only his long hair hanging gracefully upon his back. Just imagine his glorious the description is there. Long hair hanging gracefully upon his back and his indescribably beautiful small feet caught my eyesight. Uh, beautiful small feet. <laughs> my heart throbbed within me as though I had been lifted up into the region of the gods. Initially he is speaking that he had no interest to meet us. Uh, he was just actually um, uh, devouring, he is running away. So here, uh, so I had been lifted into the region of the girls. Uh, it took me a long to come back to normal composure. So he was actually unconscious normalcy after a long time. I did not know what were the feelings and the thoughts of Chetiyar and I don't care um, I, to know. So that was the feeling and I, could, I was not able to think of Chetiyar in that moment only. only. So the next experience we will try to quote um, B. Madhusudan Reddy, the great disciple we have already heard of and we have listened to uh, in many cases. On 15th August 1949, there was a darshan of this Madhusudan Reddy. On entering the front room, uh, to my utter surprise, I found it fully charged with the golden light. This experience is there. He, to my utter um, uh, surprise, I found it fully charged with a golden light. The meager furniture, the windows and the walls seemed to radiate a powerful vibration. Verily, it was a chamber of golden sunshine. Everything is golden. He feels as if everything is golden sunshine. Very soon, I discovered the radiant source. It was Sri Aurobindo sitting in the Empyrean posture in the adjoining front room, facing the approaching devotees. Just imagine how gloriously glittering a description of Sri Aurobindo. It was Sri Aurobindo, the radiant source of discovery. Then when sitting in the in an empyrean posture in the adjoining front room facing the approaching devotees. Lo and behold, I saw the one only God, the Purusataman, the golden Purusa, described as by Madhusudan Reddy. The golden Purusa, I was del deluged by a flood of some deep silence and honeyed light. There was installed in our midst the very embodiment of celestial splendor. There was uh, um, installed in our midst the very embodiment of celestial splendor, a guru with sublime dimensions, a god with infinite span, a guru with sublime dimension, a god with infinite span. Just imagine how gorgeous description is there of the guru, the, our lord. The cosmos itself was like a temple built in honor of this advent, and I felt certain that a thousand suns must have borrowed their radiance from the glowing face of Sri Aurobindo. Initially in Savitri, of course, we have seen so the sun from which we uh, kindle all our suns while describing the Divine, divine Mother. Here, she has, she, Madhusudan Reddy quotes, I felt certain that the thousand suns must have borrowed their radiance from the glowing face of Sri Aurobindo. The wonderment is too towering and massive for words. He can't imagine even express words. Of course, whatever he has described, described it, it no, nothing is actually a thing to be forgotten. Then we'll come Kedi Setna Amal Kiran, his first experience. It was, of course, 21st February 1928. The first darshan with the mother, I had the impression of a radiance all around her. The, with the mother, the first impression with the mother. 
when I first see her, I met her, saw her in the window, I had a sense of something leonine. Just imagine. When I uh, initially tell of the both the um, uh, darshan, the first darshan with the mother, I had the impression of a radiance all around her. Radiance all around her, uh, the first darshan with mother. And when I, I first saw her in the window, I was a sense of something leonine, as well as a mountainous calm. Leonine that experienced mountainous that calm, mountainous calm. He leaned towards and blessed me with both hands about my head. It was the Lord's technique and the Lord's um, reality, <coughs> blessing reality. The mother kept smiling all the time as if to set me at ease in the presence of Sri Aurobindo. My, <coughs> my turn to uh, go then was to follow American couple uh, that overhead, uh, overheard discussing uh, from the bow to uh, first. They uh, solved the problems, the American couple. They solved the problem by uh, bowing between them. This way they touched the feet of neither nor had the rare experience of being blessed by both of them uh, at the same time. So before the American couple, they did not be um, able to, because they, it is the Indian tradition, Indian culture, of course they are not aware of. So I got the opportunity, I was blessed, Sri Aurobindo um, stretched his both hands and I was, I was blessed rather. Sri Aurobindo had a soft, very soft voice, I am told, but I never heard him speak. Just imagine how the description goes that way. Then uh, we'll go for the another description that is uh, uh, in the voice of, in the um, speech, uh, in the description of Champaklal. You, you once asked me that uh, what were my impressions when I first met Sri Aurobindo and the mother? The question was put to him. What is the impression? Well, it is difficult to describe them, can't be described. But I remember this much, I, I, that I felt I was the, uh, in the presence of Shiva when I saw Satyavan and when I saw Mother, I felt extraordinary closenesses to her and I, uh, in her, I saw in her embodiment of beauty. So when I saw your window, it was like a Shiva. So the next he quotes actually, now um, after all these, these years to stay, um, um, these years of stay with them, the total impact on me is this, Sri Aurobindo, a living example of complete surrender. The great thing, of course it is an oft quoted dialogue, oft quoted by the um, people who take classes and gives lectures and all. The Sri Aurobindo is a living example of complete surrender. The mother is a living example of perfect service to the Lord. This is that impression at the many years of service she tries to conclude. So now we'll uh, listen a couple of lines from the description of Madha Pandit. Within a couple of years in 1937, I heard my first darshan of Sri Aurobindo in 15th August, of course, in 1937. It was overwhelming and I felt the only thing comparable to him was the Himalayas. It is also this example also very much opt quoted many times we see him um, only thing comparable to see him was the himalayas i still remember the smile, slight smile on his face mooded of compassion that smile and that towering personality only comparison with the uh, so-called himalayas so now we'll see uh, one more last example maybe for today this is only for udar about his first darshan in 1937, Sri Aurobindo and Mother first darshan, it was there. There was a very few people in the ashram in those days and so they were no long queue. I mean, I was, uh, I saw Sri Aurobindo for the first time, I got a suck. I had seen kings and emperors in Europe, England and Asia because you know Udar, the great uh, industrialist and foreigner of course. Uh, I have seen the great kings and emperors in Europe, England and Asia whose clothes were majestic but uh, the person inside quite ordinary. Here I see he has completed his study from England and all but he is quite ordinary. Here was a man wearing only a dhoti and a churidar shawl, sitting bare chested and looking like a king, of course uncomparable. I said to myself, at last I have seen the royalty and majesty. After the darshan, we were having a very drawn to the ashram. That was a great experience.